Blog Talk Radio. Wounded but not broken. With host Patrick Scroggins. As a U.S. Army attack helicopter pilot deployed in Iraq, Patrick faced a devastating crash, which resulted in him dying, losing a leg, and a slew of broken bones. Patrick's story of rehabilitation has helped others to overcome their own obstacles. Each week, Patrick recounts stories of inspiration and interviews guests who have overcome remarkable obstacles. This is Wounded But Not Broken with your host, Patrick Scroggins. Hello, everyone. This is Patrick Scroggins, your host for tonight's show. This is part two of uh, my two-part series. Uh, I planned to get through the first part in, in uh, last week, but it didn't, it didn't work out that way. Sorry, I just want to apologize uh, for the way that show ended. Uh, it wasn't really smooth, and that is absolutely my fault. And uh, there's a couple of things uh, after going over last week's show that I would be remiss if I did not go back and touch on them. Uh, tonight, also, I want to just uh, say my co-pilot in this this episode tonight is Matt Listener. He's online with us. Say hi, Matt. Hello, everyone. And so, that being said, we'll jump right into it. I, I need to go back uh, uh, and give credit where credit is due. Uh, when I was in the 101st and uh, deployed to Iraq, uh, one of the biggest influencers of my, you know, future in the military was command sergeant major montcalm i worked directly for him and he encouraged me all the way through uh putting in my flight packet and getting into flight school and ultimately uh, you know doing everything that i did so you know big shout out to command sergeant major montcalm he was a great uh, great influence on my career uh i also i left off with my first sheep hunt and i also need to uh uh, back up a little bit, and I want to talk about my preparation for that and what really drove me to become the person that I was with the attitude that I had. And uh, with that being said, my kids were the biggest influence in everything. You know, they're young kids. They soak up everything. They're sponges. And I knew that one day that they would run into a tough time in their life and that they, they could look back on, on me and, and, you know, and be like, damn, look what my dad went through. You know, I can do anything. And so we'll take that to my son. Uh, he's my stepson. I, I raised him since he was three. His name is Terrence Steele. And uh, at a very young age, I saw great potential in him uh, playing football. You know, he had the one thing you could not teach. He had size. He was always a, a big kid. And, and uh, you know, I – he was just kind of, kind of a little bit passive. And so all through this process, um, especially getting hurt and, and leading up to the sheep shape show, as he grew up, you know, in high school, he was, uh, you, you know, he was an average player. Um, he, re- he didn't start his junior year and that really, that really kind of messed with his mental uh, status a little bit. I, I know he really, really wanted to start, you know, he was kind of overweight. He was slow. And, uh, I get the call for sheep shape and the way I have tackled sheep shape is the way that was the old me. That was the, you know, I can do anything and nothing's going to stand in my way. I will not fail. And so I started right away working out. I mean, every single day I was doing something at least for an hour hour and a half. And, and he saw that. And so he joined in with me and this was between his junior and senior high school. And, and uh, so we became workout partners and we pushed each other and, uh, going into his senior year, he dro- he went from 340 or 45 pounds to 280 pounds, and he was fast and he leaned and he just moved really well and and he started catching catching the eye of uh, colleges. He started getting his uh, Division One college offers, which you know at this point a lot of people still didn't believe in him, but I've always believed in him and I always told him you know if you if you work hard and you have a good attitude and you're coachable, you can, you can do anything you want to do, especially in football. I mean, that's what he can teach you. And so, you know, he did, he, all credit to him. I can't take any credit for it. Uh, we just became workout partners and that was it. And he busted his butt and he en- ended up uh, getting a full ride to Texas tech. And, um, he played there for four years, uh, well, four and a half, I guess, uh, because of the, uh, red shirt freshman. And then ultimately he went, uh, 
undrafted as a rookie free agent for the Dallas Cowboys. And so, you know, now I think it's when he really kind of started believing in himself. I mean, the college football was great, but I always knew he could play at that next level and I always pushed him to do that. And, um, but it wasn't until he started believing in himself that it was possible. And so he, he did, he got undrafted. He went as an undrafted free agent and his first year in the, in the league, uh, there were some injuries and they pulled him up. And so he got thrown into the lion's den uh, right off the bat. You know, you're talking you know, the top college athletes and, and he's thrown in with the, you know, top 1% of that. And so his, uh, his first year, he started 13 games uh, for the Dallas Cowboys. I think he's, I think there's only six uh, undrafted free agent rookies in history of the NFL to do that. He's one of them. So, you know, he's already starting to write his own, own, destiny essentially I mean he you know he's got a great attitude he works hard and that's one thing that the coaches have always told me down the line you know he's such a great kid he's so coachable he listens he'll do what we ask and and I and I attribute that to the military because he was he, he was raised in that that structure and I was hard on him and I, I've been hard on all my kids because this, this isn't a it's a cruel world and you, you know they got to learn how to be hard on themselves they got to learn how to hold themselves to a high standard and and he has truly done that. And uh, my oldest daughter as well, you know, she's in college now and she's killing it as well. But uh, Terrence, um, he's in his second year now and he's uh, had an injury or a player got in trouble and he's, he's at it again, you know, and he's the, the improvement that he made from year one to year two, that was just the work ethic and that's what we need to instill in our kids. And that's what I've always tried to do. And so I really wanted to tell that story really quick, just to, uh, just to kind of give you some insight on why I push myself so hard because um, they, my kids have always been a really big motivation to me because I, I really want them to be able to accomplish anything they put their mind to, which anybody's capable of. And so moving on, I left off with sheep shape and uh, walking back from that long hunt. Uh, it was a 13 and a half hour walk back. I remember getting back to that campsite and my foot was on fire my knee hurt, my hips hurt. I couldn't, I couldn't express to you how much pain I was in enough to be life flighted out for most people. But for me, it was like bliss. I just laid down. I had a big smile on my face. I don't think I slept much that night. Um, and there was still more of that hunt to come. We had, uh, I had a caribou tag as well. And, um, the next morning we we're up chasing caribou and my cameraman at the time, you know, I think he was really, uh, wanting to get out of the mountains. We'd been in the mountains for about a week and a half at that point. And he, you know, although I miss, I miss my kids and stuff too. That was just, that's such a, that's my passion is hunting. I, I love being in the outdoors and in the mountains. I love conservation. And to me, it's not really about the, you know, the, the thrill kill of it or, you know, all that stuff that gets portrayed for me, it's about, you know, just experiencing the, once in a lifetime views that you get to see the people you get to meet. Um, there is the, the hunting community is a super tight knit community and, uh, and even more so is the, the true conservationist. And that, and that's what I consider myself as a true conservationist. So that next morning we're out, uh, we climb up this mountain and everybody's sore, everybody's hurting. And uh, we come up on this caribou and, and I don't think anybody ever wanted me to shoot an animal as bad as that cameraman. But I wouldn't shoot it because that wasn't the one we were after. It was actually bigger than the one we were after, uh, but we were after a certain one because it was old and mature. And that's just as a conservationist, that's what you do. You know, you go after the old mature animals. And so we hunted in another two or three days and I ended up on a caribou that we were after on that trip. And I remember that walk back as well because I carried uh, uh, most of uh, a lot of that caribou in my backpack and walking down through the marshes, I know how bad it sucked because I, I'm walking along in the, in the swamps and my leg would get stuck in the mud and I would, uh, I'd try to lift out of it and then my leg would pop out of the, out of the, my prosthetic leg and it was just frustrating. But so it was a very long walk back, very, uh, you know, it tested me, tested my will and, uh, my patience. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, that's, that's why, that's why we do it. I mean, we want to challenge ourselves every day. And so, um, I was fortunate enough to do, uh, five seasons with sheep shape. Um, the second hunt, I was back in the Northwest territories and, uh, that was, that was a fun hunt as well. I, uh, different cameraman this time. And, 
And I remember we were up in these really steep, rocky cliff mountains and, and uh, we're climbing and you know, try to get up over the top because we had spotted some sheep, but they went over the top. And so I'm hanging on this ledge. I don't know. It's a 1500 or 2000 foot drop probably. And then my leg falls off. It falls all the way down to the ground. You know, what do I do now? And so my cameraman had to, had to buckle all his stuff up and, uh, and climb down and get it for me. Well, I hung there for, I don't know, 30 or 40 minutes. It was pretty insane. Um, you know, that, I was a little scared at that point, but I wasn't going to let go. So I don't know. I was just trying to enjoy the sights, I guess. But um, so that hunt was uh, an ex- successful one, too. I worked really hard for that one. We ended up getting uh, snowed in on the mountain one night. I ended up uh, tying myself to a tree because it was so sl- steep so I could sleep. Um, you know, and my next sheep hunt was super, super special. And this is uh, I was this is kind of where I really started to get involved with the wild sheep foundation and started doing some motivational speaking. And I was a keynote speaker at, at their, uh, w- one of their really big events. And, uh, a gentleman heard my speech and he donated me a tag in Wyoming for a Rocky mountain bighorn, which, um, you know, if you were to put in for a draw for a Rocky mountain bighorn, it's a once in a lifetime hunt. It truly is. And it was, such an honor for me to get I've had two tags donated to me like that and I'll I'll tell a little bit about the other one as well but that Rocky Mountain was just it was so special and uh I got to go on the hunt with a really good friend of mine Colby Gines and uh, he was my guide and but I tell you uh you know getting back uh it was right on we were right on the edge of Yellowstone and so we did the trailhead on the on the on the Cody Highway and so it was a 26 mile horseback ride I think uh, to get back into camp. And I'll tell you right now that with 38 back surgeries and a horse or a mule, whichever one you're riding is not a very good, uh, it's not a very good mix. It's not conducive for feeling well. You stick it out because you're doing what you love to do and you're pushing yourself and, and you always want to, you want, you want to see how far you can do it. And so that I will say that that horseback ride is probably some of the most beautiful scenery I've ever seen in my life. Um, however long it took us, I don't even know, because time just kind of stopped for me, and I just, all the pain and, and everything kind of went away for a while, as you just soak up the, you know, the beauty of Mother Nature. So we get back into that camp, and this was my, I don't know, it was it was kind of surreal, because I'm back in there, can, you know, with everything that I've been through, just a couple of years after I've gotten hurt, and there was another group of hunters in there that had got stuck on the mountain one night, starting to lose focus, and and their morale was starting to go down. And I saw it at dinner one night, and and I even sat down with them. And I'm like, hey guys, you know, why don't I tomorrow? I'll, I I won't hunt. I'm just going to come with you. I'll walk with you. And one guy asked me if I was trying to be a smartass, and I was like, no. I mean, I, I you know, I this, these these hunts are so special to me and it's a once in a lifetime deal. I don't want to see you give up, but it, you know, the guy got so mad at me cause he thought I was trying to be, uh, you know, ornery, I guess. I don't know. And it was just, it was kind of, it kind of made me sad because they, you know, these guys, I mean, they had both legs. They really didn't have any injury. They just didn't have the drive or the will. And, and I never could understand that. And it really, it bothers me to this day cause they quit. And I, I just really, I couldn't understand how you could quit. Um, That's really not a word that has ever been in my vocabulary. And uh, so I just, you know, I I mean, it it affected me on that hunt for a couple of days and I I kind of tried, you know, it was, uh, it was just one of them things, you know, I just had to get through and I had to live with. Um, But I, uh, I pushed on and uh, that hunt really tested me. It really tested me. So uh, more about that hunt. We are going to break right now. A word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. You're listening to Wounded But Not Broken with host Patrick Scroggin. We will be right back after a word from our sponsors. Attention, looking for semi-drivers nationwide. 
GTS Transportation of Burr Ridge, Illinois, is looking to hire a partner with experienced CDL holders in every state. If you are going to drive, why not drive for the best? Whether you are driving solo, as a team, or as an owner-operator, GTS is looking to add you to their rapidly growing company. Become part of one of the most respected, driver-friendly, and successful transportation companies in America, where drivers are treated as royalty. Contact us at gtscarrier.com. Again, gtscarrier.com. Or call us at 847-754-4667. That number again, 847-754-4667. We would love to help you, which in turn helps everyone. GTS is an equal opportunity employer. Dallas Corporation and Dallas Logistics, a proud supporter of the Veterans Radio Broadcast for over 15 years. High quality printing services and warehouse distribution have been our hallmark since 1985, serving Fortune 100 companies for over 35 years. Check us out at www.dallascorp.com. CBN. Veterans Broadcast Network brings you Unbroken, hosted by Patrick Scroggin. It lies within you to conquer your greatest challenges. Patrick tackles the stories of how others faced unthinkable odds and then at a pivotal moment, a change occurred within them that gave them the strength, attitude, and direction to excel beyond the greatest expectations. Listen every week and learn how it is possible to defeat the impossible. Welcome back to Wounded But Not Broken with host Patrick Scroggin. All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, I want to continue on with this story. Um, so I uh, that that sheep this I'm talking about a sheep hunt in Wyoming. It, it you know it really it really tested me. That that terrain that I was on was super rugged, uh, super sharp, and uh, you know to my knowledge, there's not been another uh, one-legged guy that has uh, attempted. Important to me uh, to kind of pave the way because I know for me in, in my recovery process, uh, the outdoors and hunting was such a huge role. Um, you know, it motivated me and it really set my mind at ease. Once I knew I could do it, I knew everything was going to be fine. I was going to live my life just like I, I did before. And I wanted to, I wanted to show everybody else that they were capable of that. And because these hunts are dangerous and they're very demanding physically and mentally. Um, if I could do it, you know, more people would follow and they have, and that, and it's been such an honor. Uh, but on that hunt, I remember I did, um, at least two miles uphill uh, on my hands and knees. I mean, my back hurt so bad. It was so steep. You know, I was clinging on anything I could, I could uh, cling on to, to, to make it. Uh, because we we were again, we were after a certain animal, a certain sheep, and this sheep was 12 and a half years old. He wasn't going to make it through any part of his left horn, which. To me, I kind of laughed and made a joke, you know, it was a match made in heaven because I'm missing half of my left leg and he's missing half of his left horn. That's the one I have to get. And I was prepared um, to go home without one. And, uh, you know, I think on the second day, there was a Boone and Crockett Ram, uh, which is, you know, a world-class Ram, once-in-a-lifetime Ram that that, uh, we passed up because I was after this certain one. Uh, And that's to me, is true conservation. I know I caught a lot of flack for that and a lot of people you know, ask me, how could you do that? And uh, my response to them were, was, you know, if you have to ask me that question, then you don't understand conservation. So uh, anyways, ultimately ended up harvesting that ram um, and then uh, to stay. And I just wanted to stay there and hike and go see the sites. And it was great. I got to go up on the, the Trident Plateau. Um, and then later on, uh, f- f- four or five years later, I ended up buying a, a bush country, a backcountry bush plane, and I ended up flying up there and landed almost where I shot that sheep, and that was pretty special. But uh, you know, this whole time, I really didn't want to go home because I didn't want to make that dang horseback ride back to the truck for 28 miles or 26 miles, however far it was. I wasn't looking forward to that one. But uh, you know, ultimately got it all done, and uh, you know, it was a successful hunt, and I'm honored and proud to be able to do that. 
My next hunt was, uh, again, it was a donation tag. Uh, I spoke and raised some money for uh, some uh, wounded veteran organizations. Uh, again, I was speaking at the Sheep Show in Reno, Nevada, and uh, a gentleman donated me a uh, desert bighorn sheep in, in Arizona, which, again, once-in-a-lifetime deal. So, you know, I guess I've always been at the right place at the right time, um, and that's that, that's kind of a – kind of crazy for me to say that um, condition that I'm supposed to be in, you know, a lot of people would, uh, would not look at it as a blessing. And it's not that I necessarily look at everything that's happened to me as a blessing or the getting hurt as a blessing. But if you take one card, one little piece, one little segment out of, out of my life from that March 1st, 2007 until now, my life is totally different. And, you know, I wouldn't change anything for the world. And so I have been very fortunate and I've overcame a lot and, but I, I've had a lot of help and, and I want to you know, make that clear. And so um, this tag in Arizona was super special because I get to go on it with, uh, you know, I think there was 28 or 29 of my, my friends there, you know, it, it was, it was just, it was such a surreal experience. Um, and, you know, to be honest with you, that hunt wasn't super tough. I mean, Arizona is not super rugged, uh, at least where I was at. Uh, it wasn't super tough, but it was very fulfilling. It was very awesome to be able to share that. One of my really good friends, a uh, Navy SEAL buddy of mine, ended up, and a, and a buddy from Canada, they flew in uh, to watch me take that sheep. And that was special and uh, it meant a lot to me. And, uh, you know, so that was a really awesome, awesome time and a, a once in a lifetime thing to get to do. Uh, I've done a few other hunts, uh, most of them all televised. You know, it's a lot of hunts in Arizona. Um, uh, I, I've uh, shot an elk with my bow at seven yards, bugling. That was that was an amazing, amazing deal. And, you know, I think the, the reason I'm concentrating on this hunting so much is because this is my, this was my saving grace. This is what helped me. This is what I look forward to. This is what I woke up to. This was my healing process. And so that's a very important point because this isn't everybody's healing process. And I wouldn't put, you know, the thing is, is you have to figure out what your healing process is. You have to figure out what motivates you. You have to figure out what you want to do and where you want to make your statement. Um, I just wanted to make my statement, you know, sucking, climbing mountains and in pain. I mean, that's just, but I was breathing fresh air and out of the cities and, away from everything, no phones, you know, it was just so refreshing to me. And I, you know, I still do it. I still love to hunt and, and, uh, you know, I'll do it until the day that I die. Um, but, uh, a few years later, my cameraman, uh, got an idea that he wanted to do a mini documentary on me, um, chronically. And, uh, he, we had this uh, idea to go to New Zealand because New Zealand super tough, super challenging. Yeah. You can do the helicopter stuff. And we did get initially inserted with a helicopter, but, you know, I, I love pushing myself and I love living on the edge. And um, so we did a lot, a lot of hiking and, and uh, you know, that, that hunt was super special. Cause again, I got to do it with another friend that I had met through the wild sheep foundation. Um, and it was New Zealand is a beautiful place, the mountains and just everything's so crisp and clear and, and, uh, you know, we, I, this is the first time in my life I can say that I slept on top of a cloud because we were sleeping on top of this mountain and the, we were just above the clouds and I have a beautiful picture of it. And it's, it's amazing. I remember it's so cold, um, but I don't know, it was just, it was just such an amazing process. And, and after that hunt, I, I just, I just felt healed. I felt like that this was my path you know, this is what I needed to do. I need to continue to push myself. I had so much to offer to other people because I, I feel like at this point, uh, well, well before this point, but I had such a great attitude. Um, nothing was going to get in my way. Nothing was going to stop me. I was going to continue to live life to the fullest, like, you know, I had done it before. Uh, so to me, nothing really changed except for the way that I walk a little bit um, and dunk a basketball. Can't do that. But you, you have to figure out, you know, you, you just have to figure out how to do things. And, and that was, it was so awesome to be challenged like that in life. And it, it, what makes it even better is I get to carry that on and I get to help people and I love helping people. And so I, I really, um, I really made, made a, you know, made it a point within myself that I wouldn't ever turn my back on, you know, anybody that needed help, not only just a wounded soldier, but 
anybody, anybody that, that felt like they had a disability. And, you know, there's a couple of, of sayings that I kind of live by. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of them is the measure of who we are is what we do with what we have. And I think it means so much. And if you can relate to that and you, and you can like get on that level and think that, then I, you know, nothing can stop you. You can, you can, cause everybody has such tremendous potential. It's just, how do you tap into that? And another one is, is that um, it's not the disability, it's the ability. And there's so many people that have disabilities, but they don't understand how to overcome them, right? And so uh, whether you're missing a leg or maybe you got a learning disability, maybe you, I don't know, maybe you're just slow and you can't run. I mean, you know, you can classify anything as a disability and it's, it's learning how to overcome your disability. So that's why I loved, I love that saying, it's not the disability, it's the ability. It's the ability of the individual to overcome anything that's put in front of them. And, uh, you know, I think trying to spread that message and trying to, trying to help people like that. I've had so many of my friends call me late at night, you know, asking me, man, how'd you get through what you went through? You know, they're just in a tough place. They don't understand what is, what's going on. They don't understand how they feel like this. And, you know, I feel like it's an honor for me to have guys like that call me and ask me, you know, how to help them get through their, their problems. And so, uh, you know, I feel like, I'm alive for a reason. Um, I, you know, by all rights, I shouldn't be here. And so it'd be pretty selfish of me if I just kind of closed my life off and just lived my life um, within me. So I, I love to, you know, I'm open to just about anybody, um, any advice I can give, um, you know, that being said, Matt listener, I know you're a, you're a big hunter. You got any questions? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for sharing those, those stories. Each one of those has its own caveat. We could spend an hour on um, but, but you keep coming back to something that, that I think is so important above the hunting. And that's really to those folks out in our wider audience, Patrick, who, who maybe are struggling to get over that bridge of uncertainty or despair that still are focusing on the disability and not the ability. Is there, is there a, an example, one or two, that you had that conversation with, show, with someone and, and through that conversation – that person was actually able to to feel and see the ability that they were then able to crawl across that bridge. Yeah, that that is a great question, and uh, yeah, that that's a huge point that I'm, I'm really trying to make. I'm glad you picked up on that. Um, but we're going to break for commercial here, and I will answer that question as soon as we're back on. I know we have a special caller that just called in, uh, Butch Patrick. We're going to get to that in just one second. But after the commercial, I will definitely, if we get a word from our sponsors, I will answer that question. Thank you. That's a good one. We'll be right back. Listening to Wounded But Not Broken with host Patrick Scroggin. My father was the, the best truck driver I've ever known in my life. Like a family tradition. I'm a truck driver myself. I drove around the state with my cat. To be the truck driver, you not just only see where you go, you see the world in the larger perspective. This is a really good time to be in the trucking industry. The dispatchers get good loads for them. The equipment is very new and then it's very reliable. At GTS Transportation, we make dreams come true by employing truck drivers, dispatchers, mechanics, and many other occupations. Consider joining our rapidly expanding team where we put quality, human dignity, and respect back into the workforce. Contact us by visiting our website at gtscarrier.com or call us at 847-754-4667. That number again, 847-754-4667. Dallas Corporation and Dallas Logistics, a proud supporter of the Veterans Radio Broadcast for over 15 years. High-quality printing services and warehouse distribution have been our hallmark since 1985. 
serving Fortune 100 companies for over 35 years. Check us out at www.dallascorp.com. CBN, Veterans Broadcast Network, brings you Unbroken, hosted by Patrick Scroggins. It lies within you to conquer your greatest challenges. Patrick tackles the stories of how others faced unthinkable odds and then at a pivotal moment, a change occurred within them that gave them the strength, attitude, and direction to excel beyond the greatest expectations. Listen every week and learn how it is possible to defeat the impossible. Welcome back to Wounded But Not Broken with host Patrick Scroggin. To Wounded But Not Broken, um, right before we went on the break there, I had a, I had a great question. And, I, and uh, Matt, I just want to make sure I got that question correct. It's uh, can, I, can I name it a time where my experiences have helped somebody else get through their experience? Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Their own fog of war. How did you help clear that up for them? Okay, I can. Uh, there's plenty I could talk about, but I'm going to talk about one specifically. Um, it was a very high-ranking officer um, that I knew very well, that I'd done a lot with in the military, that knew me very well. We've we had shared some very intense moments together. Uh, I got a call about two in the morning, and I just knew when I looked at that phone and it was ringing with his name on it. I just knew something wasn't right. And it's very important for me to say. I mean, as soldiers. When we're put in, in, in battle to do a job, it's never without consequences. And so whether that's um, a physical injury or it's mental, and a lot of it's mental, and, and really the wounds that you can't see are the ones that hurt the most. And so and that, was, that was a prime example of this case. And uh, he was just having a very, very, very hard time. He was talking, uh, you know, about not being able to go on and he, you know, he just had a baby and, you know, he was just struggling. And uh, I sit there and talked, we talked for six and a half hours and uh, we ended up talking for the net over the period for the next couple of days. And that's because he didn't, he, he didn't feel comfortable sitting down and talking to a shrink or a psychologist. I'm sorry, but he didn't, you know, he, they can't relate. And, and, and me being in that, in that position, I can see, you know, I, you feel like, like you're being judged. Right. And so I think with him talking to me and going over some of the experiences that we lived together and telling me some of the experience that he had, you know, after I was hurt and how me being hurt affected him, I think that really, it helped him. I mean, um, just my positivity and, and, you know, saying, listen, dude, I, I wouldn't change anything that happened to me. I'd go do it again right now. You asked me to go, I'd be on an airplane right now doing the same thing I did, even if I knew the outcome was going to be the same or worse. I would do it. And that's what makes this the greatest country in the world is because we have the ability to choose to do that and we're not forced to do it. And so uh, going through that, it really helped him. And uh, ultimately, after talking to me and getting some of that stuff out, he did go talk to a professional and he got through his things. And, you know, he called me a few months later and just, you know, in tears, just crying, saying, man, thank you. You saved my life. And, you know, I really appreciate it. I mean that's the one of the best examples I could give of that of that question. Thanks, Patrick. Um, I want to say that we have a, a special guest on right now. I'm going to give a quick story on uh, how him and I met. Uh, my fiance uh, organizing a car show in Sycamore, Illinois, and uh, I was flying by with my family and my fiance, and we ended up landing and going to the car show, and Butch Patrick was there from the Munsters. And so I got to meet Butch Patrick, and we talked for a little bit. He was pretty busy, so we couldn't talk that much that time. But uh, we talked, and he – I owe, first of all, I owe this podcast and everything that's happening right now and me being able to get my word out to my fiance's dad, Blaine. And Blaine introduced me to Butch Patrick, and Butch Patrick made a call to get me on this podcast with Mark Eli, and, and here we are. And so that's just one of the things that, in my opinion, I think good things happen to good people and, and – positivity is contagious. I think my positivity and, and being positive about everything I do, I, I think it's contagious. And I just think it puts me in the right place at the right time. And this is a prime example of it. Butch, are you here? Yes, I'm here, Patrick. How are you, buddy? I'm doing good, man. How are you doing? 
fine, fine. I was listening to you, and I totally concur and wholeheartedly agree that the uh, positive energy finds other positive people. I mean, you know, I, I just, I don't know. I just, it just seems like it's, uh, that's just the way it works. You know, you, if you live your life in negativity, I mean, you, it, you know, more than likely it's going to turn out negative. Yeah, I t- totally agree. It's uh, you're sounding great, and I've been picking up on the story, so I'm really, really happy that uh, you you met some of my guys over there. They're wonderful folks, and uh, it's a good fit for everybody. So I, mean, I, could, I couldn't be more happy. There it is, man. It's a good group of people, and and uh, you know, it, we just it's awesome being able to be put on this platform to touch so many people and help help out so many people. But hey, Butch, if you would, I know you do a lot for veterans. Can you just give us a give us a rundown? Uh, you know, maybe a quick overview of of everything that you've been through in the last few years and kind of how you got into helping veterans and and what you like to do well you know actually it's it's you know i'm a big fan of gary sinise gary sinise did so much you know Forrest gump and his foundation and whenever i see um i get a lot of guys coming out when i do my personal appearances there's a lot of guys wearing caps from various wars and various veterans and it's always it's always a pleasure to meet the veterans and thank them for their service and um, when Trump got elected and the, the Patriot the Patriot thing started happening, and you know, I just we, when I was a kid, I was actually in the last year of the lottery to go to Vietnam, and I had a very low number, and I thought I was going to go to war, and I went up for my uh, my medical evaluation for the induction, and they found out that I was unfit for service due to a, a knee injury that I wasn't aware of, but I lost a lot of friends, and and ever since then, I've always had a very um, much respect, a lot of respect, and a soft spot in my heart for veterans. So when I met Mark, um, I said, wow, you know, I, I, I would like to do more because I'm going to be doing this YouTube channel featuring a lot of the people my age are veterans. So it, just, it was just a good fit. So one thing led to another. And then when I, when I met you and, you know, you stepped around the table and I saw your leg and I, I, and I just said, wow, this is just, this is just like um, the planets are aligning here in a really cool way because Lance for years has been doing a lot of good stuff, veteran affairs out of his studio. And I've known Lance since 1990. So it, it just, it just feels right. And I'm glad that it's uh, gaining traction for me and for everybody else associated with it. Yeah, man, that's awesome. You know, I really, you know, thank you for everything that you've done, but what do you think? Um, what do you think as a community uh, that we should do? I mean, you know, everybody has their own opinions. I have my opinions. I have, I've got my, my things. But as a community, what, what do we need to do better uh, for, for wounded soldiers and to be better Americans? The program that Mark has, has put together is, is incredible. I mean, that's right there. There, there is money available, and, and, he, and he's created a system to be able to tap into it and help people that can't help themselves and aren't aware that it's out there because a lot of it, a lot of the veteran benefits uh, are just difficult to get if you don't know where to look and how to do it. So the idea that he's making it available for people that need it, uh, to me, is a huge, huge first step. Right. Yeah. And I know that you'd, you'd mentioned Gary Sinise, and I think, you know, as a country and a population, we should look up to that man. He's he is probably one of the most selfless human beings on the face of the planet. That man has done so much for wounded veterans that, uh, you know, you, you don't even know where to begin. Well, you know, it, it absolutely. The, the, you know, since I, I didn't make it into the service, but one of the things that I'm very proud of what I've done is um, a lot of veterans, like myself, had alcohol and drug issues. You know, a lot of people got wrapped up on drugs because of their pain or whatever, or for trying to uh, uh, self-medicate because of PTSD. And when I got sober nearly 11 years ago, one of my my favorite things to do is to try to help fellow addicts and alcoholics and people who are in trouble to try to seek help. And uh, that's one of the things, the networking and helping people myself, that was the guy that got me sober. He said, I, he goes, I've, in 22 years, I've saved 8,000 people. He goes, if I can get you sober and it works, you can go on television and help millions. So that's kind of my, my calling and my cause is to help people. And it just so happens a lot of those people I'm helping happen to be veterans. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, I can relate to that too. Uh, you know, going through everything that I've been through as easy and sure. as accessible as the drugs were, um, you know, I, I, I mean, I got, I talked about it a little bit on the first uh, episode, you know, I got, I got super addicted to some very, very strong painkillers, uh, Dilaudid, Oxycontin, Methadone. And, you know, that's, I feel for anybody. Well, it was, it was to with- not to get into a huge debate over it, but unfortunately, you know, the almighty dollar and the pharmaceutical companies, they uh, made it very easy for that to happen. 
I agree a hundred percent, you know, uh, that's probably for another segment, uh, as far as yeah. uh, getting into that, uh, that almighty dollar and what drives our, uh, uh, the things that happens in this country. But, uh, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, um, you know, looking back to September 11th and seeing how unified the country was, it was, yeah. it's, that's awe inspiring. I mean, that just, that doesn't happen anywhere else in the world. But if you look at how quick that has tapered off and, you know, when you look at us, well, next, one, of honestly, the things, one of the things that I, I travel a lot, as you know, and most of my travel is driving because of my Munster coach and my trailer. I fly in occasionally, but most of my driving takes me through middle America. And the things that, that I find that, that are going on right now that I don't like mostly happens in cities and, and you know, and, and the, the middle America and the, the, the great plains and all the people in the small towns throughout the country, there's still a lot of patriotism out here. Believe me, there's, there's a lot of, lot, a lot of, you know, people that will, that will be there when things get tough. You know, I don't, don't count, don't count us out, but the nine one one thing and, and the patriotism is still strong, but it's in the middle, middle America in the small towns. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree with that. I mean, I live in middle America in a very small town and, and I agree with you. I, I really do. I, I think it's unfortunate that, uh, you know, it doesn't get portrayed that way. Um, that's, that's kind of a, another story as well, but, uh, yeah. y- you know, for, for the overall, I mean, I think there's so many people that are, are so grateful. And I think for the listeners that are listening, you know, if I could, if I could just say, give one piece of advice, you know, if you see a soldier, whether he's, hurt or not, or you think, or whatever, like I said, you know, the, the wounds that aren't seen are the ones that are, are the worst. And, uh, you know, if you know, they're a soldier, I mean, I know that my fiance and I do it and I've had it done to me, you know, just if you're out having a meal and you see that pay for their meal, I mean, I do it and I've had it done yep. and it, you know, it's, it's the little things, the little things, you know, all them little things add up, they add up to one big yep. thing. And, and, and that, that goes back to the positivity and, and, uh, just being thankful for our veterans. Just acknowledging them, just the acknowledgement, you know, yes, a meal or, or uh, just a thank you. I mean, any any form of acknowledging that they're not invisible. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. As human beings, we want to know that we're supported. We want to know that people are standing behind yep. us, you know, and that's the reason that I came home to when they did from Vietnam. It's because the old Vietnam vets weren't going to let that happen to us. And, you know, if I'm around next war i'll be damned if i'm gonna let it happen to them you know that's the thing you pay it forward and uh you know it all it all uh, comes back but uh, we're gonna pause here again for a quick word from our sponsors and we'll be right back thanks for listening you're listening to wounded but not broken with host Patrick Scroggin. We will be right back after a word from our sponsors. Attention, looking for semi drivers nationwide. GTS Transportation of Burr Ridge, Illinois, is looking to hire a partner with experienced CDL holders in every state. If you are going to drive, why not drive for the best? Whether you are driving solo, as a team, or as an owner-operator, GTS is looking to add you to their rapidly growing company. Become part of one of the most respected, driver-friendly, and successful transportation companies in America, where drivers are treated as royalty. Contact us at gtscarrier.com. Again, gtscarrier.com. Or call us at 847-754-4667. That number again, 847 847- Seven five four four six six seven. We would love to help you, which in turn helps everyone. GTS is an equal opportunity employer. Dallas Corporation and Dallas Logistics, a proud supporter of the Veterans Radio broadcast for over 15 years. High quality printing services and warehouse distribution have been our hallmark since 1985 serving Fortune 100 companies for over 35 years. Check us out at www.dallascorp.com. CBN, Veterans Broadcast Network, brings you Unbroken, hosted by Patrick Scroggins. It lies with... 
within you to conquer your greatest challenges. Patrick tackles the stories of how others faced unthinkable odds and then at a pivotal moment, a change occurred within them that gave them the strength, attitude, and direction to excel beyond the greatest expectations. Listen every week and learn how it is possible to defeat the impossible. Welcome back to Wounded But Not Broken with host Patrick Scroggin. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Wounded But Not Broken. We're on the phone here with, uh, we got Matt Listener on the line and Butch Patrick. And uh, Butch, I got a couple more questions for you. Is there uh, is there anything you're doing now that we should know about? Uh, I understand there's you got something going on with cemeteries or or something. Can you tell us about that? Well, when I was traveling cross country, uh, my filmmaker partner um, suggested that I should go visit interesting cemeteries about famous people and produce a show called Coast to Coast. And the uh, the first one I went to when I first started was Frances Farmer, who was an actress in the 30s and 40s, who was diagnosed with mental illness and she went from a huge Hollywood starlet to a um, to a very sad uh, sad sad state of affairs and uh, you know had you know had like electric shock therapy done to her and this and that and pretty much it was a tragic story um, Jessica Lang played her in a movie called Francis I've then gone to uh, Corral who was the king of the Godfather of the road show for CBS back in the 60s and 70s I uh, love traveling the country and my show is kind of d- dedicated to him. I visited uh, his grave along with uh, Dean Smith, who was the college football coach. I mean, excuse me, basketball coach. And then I also went and saw um, um, Ugu, uh, Ava Gardner. Ava Gardner. And a lot of my stepdad was a professional baseball player. He's very next to Roger Maris up in, uh, in Fargo, North Dakota. So as I travel around, it's interesting to see places. I was just in Springfield and Abe Lincoln, Springfield, Illinois. Boy, and what a museum and, and what, a, what a monument. So, yes, I do stop along the way and uh, do interesting stories on interesting people of, of interest. Wow. That's awesome. That's, that's really interesting. So, uh, is there anything else you got going on? I know you're a busy man. I know you're always doing something. Well, right now I just got off the plane. I'm in Las Vegas. I'm going to be filming a Halloween special here at a, at a monster museum, uh, in about an hour right after I'm done with you. And then, um, I'll be touring the country. If you go to monsters.com, my schedule is listed and I do have a couple of TV shows in the works. So, um, Rob Zombie is doing the Munsters movie. Everybody is a buzz about that. It's going to be a big feature release next year featuring Rob Zombie doing a very cool Munster movie. And um, so, yeah, uh, it's a good thing to be Eddie at Halloween, Eddie Munster. And the Munsters is a very timeless show that's got a great fan base, so I couldn't be happier. Hey, man. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, and we really – thanks for taking time out of your day to do this. I know you're super busy, and, uh, you know, I'll give you a call in a week or so, and we'll get – Absolutely, Patrick. Great show. Thank I'd you. Appreciate this. Thanks for everything you do. Bye-bye. See you. All right, everybody. So uh, Matt Listener and I, we're just going to – actually, we can go ahead. If, if anybody wants to call in, uh, we got uh, about 10 minutes or so left of the show, but we're just going to have uh, – Matt and I are going to have some dialogue. But if anybody wants to call in, you can call in at 516-453-9948. That's 516-453-9948. If you want to call in with any questions or uh, anything that I can answer, uh, just feel free to call in. Hunter as well, huh? Yes. What uh, Have you been on any sheep hunts? No. Uh, that's why I'm friends with you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd love to go with you, man. I, I walk with you. Yeah, that's. That, we'll, we'll we'll put that together. But I just your your stories about the, the sheep hunts and. I got my moose up in up in Alaska, and and you're spot on. The the the, the kill is only five percent of really the excitement. Ninety five percent is just being under God's umbrella, experiencing nature to its fullest. Military, I mean, because you go in, you know, you might go into a camp in in Alaska or in uh, you know in Northwest Territories or British Columbia, and you don't know any of these guys, mm-hmm. but in five minutes, everybody's cutting up and. You know yep. your brothers, and it, it's like you, it's yeah. like you've known each other for years, and that's 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 such an addictive thing. It's it's so awesome. You just you know you just can't find that everywhere. Yeah, and and you're also spot on about conservationists, uh, you know, passing up that prize 
mm-hmm. bull or, or, or what what have you, going after what you set your sights on. That's true discipline and also true respect for, for the art. Yeah, and you know, a lot of people don't they, – they just don't understand that. I've, I mean, I've had death threats and everything, and, and I've actually even – I you know, if I get if I get a bad comment or something, I'll actually reach out and try to have, you know, conversation, you know, and try to educate mm-hmm. as well as I can. You know, some people you can't. They just don't want to hear it, and they got their own views, and that's fine, and they're entitled to that. But, uh, you know, I, I just – I don't know. I just think, uh, you know, nowadays people are so quick to judge just because – they don't agree with something, so they don't agree with. It. They think yeah. you shouldn't but. judge because judge they're ill-informed. You know, going said, back, do you have to, any? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no I, I stepped in. Go going back. To, yeah, go go back on on all these caveats, these stories, how you've helped. Do you have any? I don't know, twenty-four, thirty-six month goals with with what you're doing and this platform you have and who you want to reach to. Yeah, I think, you know, I'm all about goals. Um, I've set goals for myself my entire life, you know, some I attain and some I do not. And, you know, mm-hmm. that I, I always try to talk about, you know, you got to learn how to fail before you can learn how to succeed. And we learn more in failure than we ever do from success. And so, I mean, I can sit here and tell you every time I've ever failed in my life, but I can't sit here and tell you every time I've ever succeeded. And so, right. um, yeah, I mean, I'm all about goals. You know, with this, the goal was, you know, to get the. I mean, I I, I do little goals. I don't I don't go with the giant ones. I, I go little, step by step, and 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 they always get higher and higher and harder to achieve. But you know, with this, it was just you know, Dory the best I could, um, and mm-hmm. now to get through this one, and hopefully you know continue to grow the following. I have some great friends that are going to come on the show with some great stories. Um, I have some really good ideas for how I kind of want to take this. It's not going to be just a bunch of wounded guys talking and telling their stories, although we need to hear every story. And that's one of my big motivations is with that World War II and early Vietnam era guys, them great stories, them super inspiring stories of, of, you know, heroic values are leaving us, you know, because unfortunately, and, and, you know, I don't want that to happen with my generation. If you have a great story, I want to hear it. And that, you know, that I'm just going to go ahead and say this now. And if anybody's listening and they they know of somebody that has a story that needs to be told or wants to tell the story, you can email me at Patrick at VeteransRadioHour.com. It's Patrick at VeteransRadioHour.com. Email me and you know, let's get started. I mean, I'm not going to concentrate just on. You don't have to be a veteran to be inspirational. And I, you know, we got some stories in the works, or I have some stories in the works that aren't from veterans uh, or from just their life and uh, just come under an unfortunate accident and, you know, and they've thrived, you know, they've thrived through it. They've pushed through it. And um, you know, just, you don't have to be a military guy, but uh, I do have a lot of military friends that were hurt that are, you know, uh, both mentally and physically. And we're going to hear some, a lot of them stories too, but uh, I really, this show is unlimited. I want it to be informative. I want to help people. You know, if anybody has any questions of me or I can help in any way, just shoot me that email and, you know, I'll get back with you as soon as possible. But uh, as far as the guys, the limit with this thing, you know, with podcasts, the way they are as accessible as they are nowadays, the amount of people you can touch, the amount of people you can get involved. I mean, you know, sky's the limit. I mean, I would say Joe Rogan, but I think I'm going to be bigger than him. So we'll see. I like that. <laughs> but uh yeah, I mean it's uh you know it's a, it's it's such an honor for me to be be able to tell my story like this number one, but it's going to be even more of an honor for me to bring other people in to tell their stories and how they overcome them because there's as we all know there's multiple ways to skin a cat and just the way that I I overcame my thing it might be completely opposite from the next guy and that's we can all learn here. Yeah, and you brought up a good point. The, those those precious stories from the, our veterans from World War II and the Korean War. Now we're moving into the Vietnam War. There, there were stories about self sacrifice, and because of our the development of our psychology, we're now using those stories to help other people, which obviously your platform is. So that's so vitally important to continue this. It is, and these stories, man, these stories got to go on. I mean, there, I know some World War II stories that didn't get told that are just amazing. But hey, I think we got a caller uh, to call in. Okay. I'm gonna, we're gonna patch him in here and talk to him. Hello. Hello. Yeah, this is Nathan in Orlando. How you doing, Nathan? Pretty good. Uh, can you repeat your address? I'm gonna send this to some people. I'll, I'll copy you on it, um, and let them know about your show. And these are people that have a history in the military and they're active with veterans 
uh, reaching out to our veterans. I'm just going to send your show to them and have them archive it, but you'll get a copy of it. Can you repeat that uh, email again? Yes, sir. It's Patrick. Got it. Okay. Is there, is there, is there a, a at? Yeah, okay. Patrick. It's a P-A-T-R-I-C-K with the at symbol. And then veterans. Oh, at, the ET- uh, yeah, Patrick. Okay, does the at come after our? No, the at comes after Patrick. Okay, got it. Yeah, Patrick at veteransradiohour.com. Okay. I will. I'll, after the, well, while you're even still talking, I'm going to send it to a couple of people. That okay. sounds good. Yeah, we're about to wrap this show up, but I tell you what, you sent out that email and uh, t- tag me in or CC me in on it, and uh, I'd love to I'd love to get to talk with them and hear their stories. And- okay, and also I got uh, one of the owners of my company is a, a retired Navy Am- admiral, and um, I'm going to send him your company and, and and have him listen to this for the sake of considering advertising for drivers on it. Uh, I drive a gas tanker here in central Florida. Um, oh, you know, he might want to do some advertising. Oh, that sounds good. Okay. So that's Patrick at veterans com. Veterans radio hour.com. Veteran. Okay. I'm saying I'm glad I read it. Veterans radio hour.com. Yes, I'll, sir. I'll, I'll get that in the mail to you, sir. All right. Hey, thank you, Nathan. I really appreciate it. Yes. Yes. No problem. Yep. Thanks for listening. Have a good night. All right, Matt. We're let's see what were we talking about before we had the call. Well, just talking about different goals and what you want to do with it. And there's an example. It's not necessarily a story, but your platform is providing this outlet for for future growth of people that 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 are that are in need. Yeah. You know, I think that. Um, Again, uh, I you know I'm always gonna I'm always gonna take care of my military buddies. You know they got there's some great stories that that haven't been told that I'm gonna make sure get told. Um, mm-hmm. But there's a really big story that we're gonna work on. Uh, a lady out of Kansas uh, about the uh, wheel the disabled wheelchair games. We're gonna do a big story on that. Um, but pretty much, I mean, I just this show is about inspiration. I want to touch people's lives. I want people to understand that no matter what you're never out of the fight no matter how you're feeling no matter how you're down no matter what's going on in life there's always a way out of it and it can always be better and that starts with positivity and um i don't know i mean i I think this could be unlimited uh you know i think this this can be such a great platform to touch so many people and that's that's really what i want to do i want people to listen to these and you know get off get off the off the waves and be like man you know i learned something tonight but you know but we'll see. But, you know, I, I want to thank everybody for, for tuning in for this uh, episode two of my story. Next week, we're going to have another great story with a, a buddy of mine on here. And uh, you all have a wonderful evening and a great week. Well, thank you. My father was the, the best truck driver I've ever known in my life. Like a family tradition. I'm a truck driver myself. I drove around the state with my cat. To be the truck driver, you not just only see where you go, you see the world in the larger perspective. This is a really good time to be in the trucking industry. The dispatchers get good loads for them. The equipment is very new and then it's very reliable. At GTS Transportation, we make dreams come true by employing truck drivers, dispatchers, mechanics, and many other occupations. Consider joining our rapidly expanding team where we put quality, human dignity, and respect back into the workforce. Contact us by visiting our website at gtscarrier.com or call us at 847-754-4667. That number again. 847-754-4667. Dallas Corporation and Dallas Logistics, a proud supporter of the Veterans Radio Broadcast for over 15 years. High quality printing services and warehouse distribution have been our hallmark since 1985, serving Fortune 100 companies for over 35 years. 
check us out at www.dallascorp.com. CBN, Veterans Broadcast Network, brings you Unbroken, hosted by Patrick Scroggin. It lies within you to conquer your greatest challenges. Patrick tackles the stories of how others faced unthinkable odds and then at a pivotal moment, a change occurred within them that gave them the strength, attitude, and direction to excel beyond the greatest expectations. Listen every week and learn how it is possible to defeat the impossible.